Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you guys how to dollar cost average in three specific ways on the cryptocurrency markets. The first one is going to be long term, then we're going to be talking about short term, and then medium term there. And medium term basically means buying at the cycle low and selling at the cycle high. That way you guys are able to make some really good profits there. So to get started off here, you guys, when you open up TradingView, your charts may look something like this, maybe a little bit more cleaner than mine, but I want you guys to go over here and I want you guys to make a new layout. You guys are gonna type in DCA here, dollar cost average, and you can spell it out. You can do whatever you want to, just hit save. And then from here, you're gonna have a blank chart. Right now, this is on the 15 minute Bitcoin chart. I want you guys to go over here to the daily, and then I want you guys to go over here and get rid of the volume because you're not gonna need it at this point. Afterwards, you guys can put on log if you want to. I just do it because it looks a little bit nicer. From there, you guys are gonna type in SMA. It's normally it goes off of simple moving average, but as far as trading view is concerned, it says moving average simple. I don't know why, but it's there. It also be number one on the technicals, okay? So hit this three times, one, two, three. Hide this, the last one here, you're not gonna need it for a while. The first one I want you guys to go over here, go to settings, I want you guys to set 100. Then I want you guys to go over here to time frame and change that to a weekly time frame. Go over to style and make this into green. It can be any color you guys want it to be. It does not have to be a specific color for this one. Next up, go over here, do the same thing. Make this into a blue, thicker line, input. I want you guys to make this into 150. And again, time frame, don't do chart. Go over here to weekly, all right? Now, here's the way this looks on the daily chart. For now, let's go over here to the Bitcoin USD chart off of Coinbase, just so we have more data to kind of work with, so I can show you why this works. So when you guys are thinking about long-term dollar cost averaging, people would assume that no matter where the market is, you guys are probably gonna be adding in a few bucks every week or a few bucks every month. That's not the best way of going about it. Typically, if you guys are gonna be holding for years and years and years, this is what I'd recommend. When we break down below the 150 weekly moving average, that's where you guys are gonna be deploying capital and dollar cost averaging every week, or if you guys have the time, you guys are gonna be buying every single day, all right? Now, the way I typically will go about this is, when we're not in this bearish mood where the whole world is falling apart, exchanges are collapsing and things like that, typically what you guys are gonna be doing is you guys are gonna have a lot of your stable coins basically just staked getting interest on them. So this is the safest way I think I found is going to be going to uh, owning some USTD or some USDC and having that staked on crypto.com or Coinbase. Those are really the only two exchanges I trust wholeheartedly in America to really just hold everything and be good. Maybe Kraken if you wanna go with Kraken as well. But those are some of the heavy hitters that I, I always trust. Now, hopefully it doesn't come to bite me in the butt later on, but so far it's what I've been using, all right? So, when we start to break down though, you're going to sell all of that USDC that's been earning interest for a while, and you guys are going to be dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin, into whatever currency you guys want to, weekly. Weekly is the best way to go about it. But the reason I had you guys open up the daily charts is this. Let's say we're breaking down and everything is crashing. We have a crash right here. We have a larger move right there, larger move right there. On these days where everything looks like it's really, really bad, that's where you're gonna deploy the majority of your capital. So if you guys were looking to invest maybe $500 a week into cryptocurrency or maybe just $100 a week, if you guys have one day that's really just coming down quite hard, you guys may actually just put $100 on that one day and then another $100 on this day, then another $100 right here, and then if it springs back up, you just kind of hold off a little bit towards the end. And then at the end of the week, if things are still looking sideways, you can kind of deploy the rest of that capital. But I usually like to buy when everything is crashing and falling because you never know exactly how far it's going to go down. But just buying on that dip, usually Bitcoin to have a pretty nice resurgence afterwards. You can see that for multiple times here. Now, the time where you guys are going to stop dollar cost averaging basically for the long-term holders who are there for you know years and years and years and years is basically once we start breaking back above the 100 weekly moving average or the 150 weekly moving average. Each one is gonna be just fine, it doesn't matter all too much, but that's usually where you guys are gonna be saying, hey, I bought up a lot here, now all of the extra cash I've been making as I, um, you know, for work or whatever, you just start staking that back in there. If you guys want to, you guys can always adjust that and to put it into other crypto to kind of ride the wave, if you will. But for dollar cost averaging long-term plays, this is the best way to do it. Um, usually you want to stick within that budget. If you guys have more money to deploy, 
this is where the other things that we're talking about here, the other ways to dollar cost average are going to come into play a lot more. Okay. So next up here, I'm just going to take off the green one for now. And we're going to go over here to the weekly chart. The first one we just did was for long term. Okay. This one, we're going to be doing short term dollar cost averaging. And after that, we're going to be doing medium term. So for short term dollar cost averaging, basically, you're going to want to see us above the 150 week moving average you want to see everything going very swimmingly an easy way to put this and make sure everything is looking fine is if you go over here and you type in smart money concepts this is just a very visual way of seeing it you guys are going to go over here type that in on the indicator of smart money concepts pull this up in settings all you guys want to do is go over here to color candles don't worry about show internal structure turn all of this off all of it off all of it off does not matter at all all you want to see are the candles green or are they red? Okay, that's all you got to look at. Typically, these are really good buy and sell signals in case you guys want to do some really long trades. And if, if you see yourself clicking off of it and the colors don't match up, go over here to these three little dots. And I want you guys to visual order, bring to front, and then you can click wherever you want to be fine. But typically, buying where it's green is usually a good opportunity to make some money if you guys like to swing trade. Just a thought right there. Now, when you guys are in this mindset here, the way you guys are typically going to dollar cost average for the short term here, which is basically going to be about three to four months. Go back over here to the daily chart. After Bitcoin's made a pretty large move, typically this is a move of above 30%. You're going to go into a consolidation phase. So you can see this move over here. That was at 50%. That was pretty good. You can even see this move right here was up 34%. This move up right here, 20%, not nearly enough. This move all the way up here, 27%, almost 30% if you really want to say it there. The larger move right up here was about 47% or so, okay? So typically the way this is going to work is after that large move, Bitcoin's going to dump one way or another. You can see a small downward move here, a big move here, a, slaw, a, a sloth right here, a big move down right there. You're going to notice those types of things happening. Once it's reached its peak and you start to see things really start to turn over, you might have a MACD or something else in there. That's usually where you guys are going to start to dollar cost average. Now, you can see right here, right here, right here, you know, you have all these types of moves. I guess not right there. The way I envision it is once the move is stopped and we're kind of going sideways for at least two to three days where we're just not pumping up anymore, that's where you guys typically want to start the dollar cost averaging. And you guys are going to be usually dollar cost averaging every week for about two to three months. And then you guys are going to be holding for another two to three months after that. Um, so it does take some time. It may even take longer depending on how the market's reacting. But usually those are going to be really good, strong ways of making money. And this way of trading also opens up trading with leverage, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, we've done this a few times before as well when we're talking about dollar cost averaging, where you might lose a little bit of money ahead of time on these types of trades. But overall, the money is going to be absolutely fantastic. We did this back in uh, December. Uh, sold it in March, $8,000 profit. It was a really, really good time. Now, let's say you have a day that you really want to buy. It could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It could be Saturday, Sunday. Cryptocurrency is 24-7, as you guys know. For now, let's just say we buy every Monday, and we have a Monday right there. So let's go over here, and let's just go about maybe a month worth of buying, just so we can kind of keep track of everything here. There we are. Okay. Let's say you did this. In fact, let's add a few more just to make everything nice and easy. I don't. I want to make sure you guys understand how many times you guys are buying re realistically because you guys are buying quite a bit. And we're right there, okay? Let's say that the average is right around, let's just say up here. I know it's maybe a little bit high from some of these moves down here or so, but I, I think that's a good average, okay? So your average is right there around 23,281. For now, let's get rid of all the other stuff and let's just have 23,000 right around there again. So by holding through all this, right, you will notice that at the beginning, you're actually making some money. By the time you move your averages up here, you may end up going into the red for a little bit over here and you're definitely in the red right here. Once everything is green though and everything is looking okay, typically you're going to be looking at some money. Now, one of the things I want you guys to understand though is as I'm doing this, we're still technically in the red, but it'll still work here as long as the market's off the bottom. I just wanted to show you guys the first example. This is kind of the murky one, and we can kind of go on from there, okay? Now, however long you want to wait, this is about two months of buying. 
if you guys want to hold on for a little bit longer, the last one I think we talked about was right here. All right. Within a few weeks, this is about 24 days. Two months is about here, right? Your average is probably going to be somewhere around 29,000. So you, you're buying around with an average of 23,500 and you're going up towards 23,232. That's a return of about 25% about. So if you guys have a leveraged long here, you're looking at about 25 times two if you're responsible, times three if you're reckless and you guys really wanna do something crazy, by all means you can go for it, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, it does matter, just don't go crazy with it. I wouldn't go above a 3% actually when it comes to um, these types of leverage plays with dollar cost averaging, three is usually the max unless you may be holding something like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum or Solana. Those you can maybe tweak it around just a little bit here, but if you guys are new, be careful with it. So you guys looking at 25% times two, and it took you around 60 days, okay? And of course, if you guys feel like it, you notice you can sell right here, still make a good profit, you can sell right there. You guys can do a lot. But I'm just saying if you just stuck for 60 days, that's typically the way to go about it. A lot of times you will sell at a big peak when you're thinking, oh wow, things are getting, kind of getting out of hand, I should probably sell. Sell, take all the profit, don't worry about it. You can scale it if you want to, but that's an easy way of going about it. The next way over here, as you guys recall, is if we actually start and we wait for those moves to be green, what you guys are gonna be looking for is a large move that's 30% or higher. Again, this one wasn't actually 30%, it was close, but it wasn't there. There's a reason that the 30% rule is here, but let's go over here, 57%. That's a nice move right here. Or even just for this week right there, or these two weeks, it ran at 45%. So let's go over here, All right? Let's go over here to the daily chart. Show you one more example of this. Then we'll go through the cycle lows and cycle highs for that bear market activity. So again, this could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This just happens to be a Monday. So let's go from there, Monday, Monday, this thing, well actually I forget I can move this thing around, can I? And Monday, let's just do a couple more in there. All right, so this is one of those things where it doesn't always end up being very, very pretty right away. So you see all these moves, an average would probably be a little bit high. It might be somewhere around here around 28,400. So let's get rid of all this stuff again. 28,400. And you guys are gonna notice pretty fast, if you guys start buying right here and here, things may look good for a while, but eventually things are actually gonna get kind of red here because you're gonna have an average that's really close to this, kind of come down, down, down. You guys are gonna have to trust it, okay? And there's two ways of going about this, and it really just depends on how long you want to hold. If you're taking the time to buy for, let's say, um, you know, this was about 84 days, 60 days, this is about two months. Remember, I like to buy for two to three months. But again, it depends on how long you want to buy it. You may feel like, oh, things are not looking good. I don't want to hold this anymore. But if you guys are buying for three months, you guys are going to be waiting for three or four months for that move to make up some ground, okay? So basically what that means is that as your averages move down because this thing, uh, the price moved down, let's say your new average after everything's said and done is going to be down here around 26822 It'll go back up, right? It'll go back up and you'll see you're making yourself 16% profit or something like that. That's 50 days. This is two months. This is three months. Four months you would have been seeing some of those high points there in that big pop. That's one way that I typically would like to play this. And again, you don't have to sell all the way up here. You could sell on this very large move up here because if you guys are doing Bitcoin, sure, you're making a small amount of profit. In this case, let's say your average moved down here during the, the pop and you sell towards the high, you know? That's still 18% profit. If you wait for a little bit higher again, up to that 50 there, you guys can make 27, again, about 50%. And that's just for holding for about what about four or five months it looks like so not not terrible one of the other things here that you guys may notice is you guys can always hold on a little bit longer if you guys want to for me it it's not so much about how long i want to hold bitcoin it's more about the altcoins the altcoins are going to be making you a lot more money here than uh, bitcoin would be and that's usually why you want to have that diversified portfolio but bitcoin will tell you pretty much when to start buying okay i think that's the big thing here now one last one here this is what we did just a few weeks ago, a few months ago. We started to dollar cost average right here. And you'll notice that we had a pretty large move. This to here was 30%. 
started going sideways. We bought every Thursday. So over here, Thursday, over here, Thursday, 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 Thursday. And what happened? Eventually, we had that really large move that came up. I was still dollar cost averaging actually a little bit here when I probably shouldn't have been. But the moves were happening so fast. I just kept on, kept it up. And I sold right here, I believe, March 4th, this Monday, right here when we had a spike. I sold right here. Now, you will notice that Bitcoin and a lot of other altcoins actually moved higher. But my average for the most part was around here on $45,000, $47,000. And I sold Bitcoin for an, uh, about $66,000. That's what you guys are looking for there, okay? Nice and easy. Don't worry about all the pain right now because you can see we had a pretty robust move right here. And guess who's been buying since like March 7th, March 4th? Guess what? I'm down money. I can show it to you guys right now, actually. I'm never afraid of showing the downward part of these because, again, the profit is what you guys are looking for. Right now, my position, you can see above my head, and it was kind of hard, is down $720. I have maybe one or two green things on here, but not a lot. A lot of things are red. I've done this before. Go over here to close positions. You guys will see one bad trade right here. Big time I sold that because that thing just really hit the bed. I don't want to mess it up anymore. But what do you call everything else? Green, 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 green. These are everything we did before. And you guys can see I had people. And you can see how I sometimes I just bought once, right? Sometimes you buy more than once. It all really depends. Things like Ajax. See how many times I bought this before I sold. If you guys find something you guys like a lot, then just buy into that one. It'll be fine, right? Uh, make sure you guys don't overdo it, but it, it can work out very really well if you guys actually do a little bit of research and figure out where the money is actually flowing. In this last event, it was a lot of AI tokens, so I put a lot more money in AI because those are the things pumping up, right? So that's what you guys want to dollar cost average into. And then finally here, one of the things I want you guys to do is bring back up this green line right there. Go back over here, get rid of all the lines. And this is if you guys wanna buy at the cycle low and sell towards the cycle high. Typically, this is gonna be the best way of doing it. If you guys want to, you guys can open up this other SMA and you guys can go over here and you guys can open up, excuse me, the 200 chart weekly and turn this into any color you guys want to. I have it yellow. Usually my favorite colors here are gonna be green, blue, and yellow. Uh, so typically if you guys want to buy at the cycle low and you guys want to get the best price possible you guys are going to start really loading up once we break down below the 150 weekly moving average here break down there break down there you're loading up broke down here you're really loading up above that now typically what i'll do here is a, I may stop actually buying once we get back above that 200 here. So I will primarily only buy when we're down below that. If I see us screaming back above this right here, you see pretty early, I'll stop and I'll stop buying for a little bit and I'll wait for us to get back down here and so forth and so forth. Usually when we get down below this thing, it's really, we're only down there for a few weeks at best. You see this one right here, COVID, only a few weeks. Over here, only a few weeks. Actually, you can maybe even say a couple months. That's probably the best way to say, say it. But usually when we're there, I'm actually buying up the majority of my cryptocurrencies. Now, let me hide all this other stuff here. All right. Now, as far as when you guys want to start selling your cryptocurrency, this is something that technicals really aren't going to help too much with. I can actually just put my face up here now. I will have these mental ideas of how far Bitcoin can go. Let's say for this cycle, like maybe 100,000, 150,000, something like that. But in all honesty... I'm not really aiming for those high levels. I'm going to start selling off the where I, you know, my cycle lows when I bought them, you know, FTX was crashing stuff like that. I'm going to start selling a lot of that stuff when Bitcoin is around $80,000. We're pretty close to that already. Now, that, that does not mean I'm selling all of it. It basically means I'm going to start selling it because this is getting to the high point where no matter what I do, I'm, I'm having lots of profit. If I have an average of around 20,000 Bitcoin or $20,000 per Bitcoin and I'm selling it at 80,000, that's a great return for the cycle. That's a really great return. And of course, I was doing this also with a lot of altcoins out there, like the Dogecoins, uh, Floki, you know what I'm talking about? So it'll it'll odd, honestly be a lot more money coming from that direction, but you still want to have that stable, stable, because what you do here will apply to all of the altcoins. When Bitcoin's below those moving averages, you're also buying altcoins, but you guys may be buying altcoins that are uh, just putting less money in there until things really start to look bad on a, when they're crashing, then you guys would pop up, put in a little bit more money there. And then finally, this guys, um, whatever your mental target is, 
scale out, scale out. You don't have to sell everything at once, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, and the Bitcoin starts to dump, and it just starts to go really, really bad, and you guys panic and you sell everything. Even if you panic and you sell everything, guess what? You still would have made so much money that it doesn't freaking matter. And that's something that I've done before by accident. Uh, you know, I've hit the wrong button where I like, close all positions. Did that a few weeks ago, a few months ago. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, like, you know, with that few, month of, few months of holding, I walked away with $8,000 cash, you know, like $8,000. So don't be uh, afraid because you're, you're getting yourself a luxury. You're giving yourself a luxury to panic um, when you guys are able to do these cycle moves. So remember, when we're below that 150 weekly moving average, that's when you guys are going to pile drive hard. But when everything is really, really good, just, you know, stake your USDC or if you guys want to keep it in cash and do something else with it, just make sure the money is there when the market eventually turns bearish and you guys will be plenty, uh, you guys will be well off. Okay. So hope you guys enjoy this. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know and I'm uh, happy to help you out. So please give me a subscribe. Thanks.